So, question from a chef. What is an adequate and reasonable rage in 2023? I am currently being paid £13 an hour as a chef de party. Is this acceptable or should I demanding more? Other freelance chefs come in the kitchen and they are on 18, 19 pounds per hour. Okay, this is not a straightforward one. I've got very firm beliefs on pay and standards, etc. We have gone from a scenario in the working mentality and hospitality uh, where wages were very, very poor. And now we are almost at the other end of the spectrum. We have got uh, freelance chefs, agency chefs, even some chefs themselves, um, getting close to £20 per hour, some of them £25 per hour. Uh, there's one um, chef that I remember very particularly that didn't want to work for anything less than £500 a day. Um, I wasn't entirely sure how much work they actually got from that. Uh, yes, they were a good chef, but I wouldn't have put them at £500 per day. There's plenty of things to take into consideration. Um, if you are a chef de party and you're in an employed role, you are getting £13 per hour. You are also accumulating holiday pay. Most freelance chefs, and depending on the agency format of whether they're employed or self-employed, etc., um, they may not be accumulating holiday pay. Uh, there's also the factors to consider with freelance that they aren't, for instance, taking home um, sick pay if they do have time off. Um, and there's also the, for instance, the, the maintenance of their own business as well. Most of them will, for instance, run professional emails. They will have accountants to pay for. They will also have, obviously, any additional business costs that they aren't going to be provided. Because believe it or not, any um, equipment that you are required to have as your job, your employer should provide for you. Even things like knives and uniforms, etc. If they don't provide it for you, then they should be able to subsidize it within your rages for you to be able to afford to go and buy, buy your own knives, uh, chef's uh, uniform, etc. But that, that's down to you and the employer to come to an arrangement with that um, and ideally have it in your contract. So when we're talking about freelance chefs, most of the time, and in an ideal world, this is probably going back before... Um, the nine uh, 2016. Freelance chefs um, tended to work very, uh, very varied shifts at a number of places. Most of the time, they will go into a place without any knowledge of what it is they are walking into. They may be the only chef in the kitchen where they have a responsibility. And these were always the most fun jobs that I had on the freelance market where I'd walk into a kitchen and I'd just be told, this is the menu, they're your fridges, have a look and just make uh, let us know whether you're missing anything. And literally, I'd have two hours to check for everything, prepare what's on the menu to the best of my ability. Most of the time, if it's, for instance, a, quite a varied menu where they've got de several different cuisines on there, there's a good chance that there's going to be something on the menu that you'd never made before, or they they'd created something on a dish where they created their own word for something that you'd never heard of. And you've just got to try and in invent this thing so that it's suitable for the menu. So most of the time with freelance chefs, they're walking in very stressful environments. So part of that stress and part of that unknown is the whole point of the higher wages. And most of the time, they're expected to just perform. I mean, if we all imagine to back when we are uh, our commie chefs or apprentice chefs, and we're told this is the menu. I think most of us went through that period of just like being very anxious, of feeling like we're meant to know the whole menu straight away and meant to just sort of be able to get on it straight away. And there'd be numerous times where we wouldn't remember everything on the menu and we just have to just sort of like keep trying and keep reminding ourselves. And sometimes it'd probably take us maybe a week, two weeks to properly learn a menu. But you have to remember these freelance chefs, when they're going in and agency chefs, they're going in and they're essentially having to learn the menu on the job for one day. And then they're going to go to somebody somewhere else and they're going to learn another menu. So that's one factor to consider. Another factor to consider is where are you, where are you working in the world? Are you in a city centre like London or are you out in the middle of the countryside? Are you provided accommodation for your job? Uh, is the job a small little pub that has 30 covers? Is your job a large chain of hotels? 
there'll be a number of variables to consider. Um, and this is what frustrates me when I see certain job roles that turn up on the market. These job roles may be a small little calf that may be serving 30, 40 people per day. And they're just looking for a kitchen assistant and they're advertising the role at £10.50 per hour in today's market. And they get slated by chefs, chefs that essentially become very, very arrogant, that believe that everybody should be on 16, 17, 18 pounds per hour. But essentially, this job role is a kitchen assistant job role where their responsibility is to do general prep, such as make coleslaw and peel a sack of carrots or peel a sack of potatoes and then do some pots and do some cleaning. The job role itself is not going to be a stressful job role. And if it's in a calf, what's the most complex cooking item that's going to be there? Maybe a bacon sausage cob or an omelette. There's not going to be a great deal of technical cooking um, involved in the job. So I think uh, part of the problem is this mentality that every single job role needs to be X, Y, and Z. It needs to be equivalent to 40 and 50,000 pounds per year. For instance, when I first started on the chef market, my ambition was to earn uh, 30,000 pounds per year. And this is going back maybe three years. And there was plenty of chefs that were on a similar age to me. I was advertising myself out at 12 pounds per hour. And most of the other chefs were like, well, you can't advertise yourself at £12 per hour. The, the going rate's 30 and the going rate's 40. You're just undercutting us to get work, etc. But the idea is, if you find out what it is you want to earn per year, just divide that by 48 weeks per year or even 46 weeks per year. So essentially you're saying, OK, I'm going to have five weeks holiday and then one week for my annual accounts because I want to make sure I've got a year's worth of accounts. Or you might take an extra week off. So then you've got, for instance, seven weeks off per year because you want a week where you can network with other businesses and potential restaurants and pubs that you might go and work for. But essentially, you've deducted all this time and then you're left with the amount of weeks. So this might be 45 weeks per year, taking into account January as well. And from that 45 weeks, you divide how much it is you want to earn per year by 45 and then by however many days you want to work per week. You might say, well, I want to work four days per week or I want to work five days per week. And then all you've got, you've got a daily figure and then you can work out, for instance, well, OK, I'm going to work 10 hours a day. Well, that's going to be my target. If I work 12 hours a day, then I'm up on my um, estimated amount. And if I've said I'm going to work four days per week and I end up working five, then I've got a day in the bank. So when the time does dry up, then I've got a bank that I can rely on. So. But like I say, like people were slating me because they were like, well, you're only offering 12, uh, 12 pounds per hour. But I'd done my calculations. I knew that I wanted to earn an average of 30,000 pounds per year. That's what I could live off. I didn't live an extravagant life. I didn't have many expensive clothes, etc., or ridiculous habits. So I knew that 30,000 pounds was going to be enough for me. So that was the equal, uh, equal amount of 12 pounds per hour working an average of 48 hours to maybe 50 hours per week. Um, over about 48 to 50 weeks per year. And I was quite happy with that. And as long as I earned that money per week, per year, etc., then everything was okay. So you might need to just do it like that. If, if you're trying to think, well, am I on a good wage? Am I on a wage that I accept? Figure out how much money you need to earn per year and then divide that down. And if you're saying that I want 40, 50, 60,000 pounds per year, uh, take, it, take into consideration where it is you're working. Are you working in a small cafe? Are you working in a big hotel? What is your responsibilities? Is your responsibilities to reheat food? Or is your responsibilities to create HACCP? Is your responsibilities to understand nutritional information? Are you expected to, for instance, manage a large brigade of team? Or have you got a very simple job that doesn't require any stress at all? Because ideally, if your job is more stressful, you should be paid more money. If your job is less stressful, then you should be paid less money. Last year, I had a situation where a lot of uh, freelance chefs were slating a job because it was offering £14 per hour. And essentially, the going rate for the freelance chefs was £18 an hour. But this business, it couldn't afford to pay £18 an hour. 
they could only afford to pay £14 an hour. They had essentially done a hard costings and that's what they could afford to pay. They couldn't increase the prices of what was on the menu because the customers were not willing to pay it. They tried it and the customers stopped going in. So then they had to lower it and the customers came back in. It's the way the market is at this moment in time, cost of living, people cannot afford to eat out at higher wages, which is going to be a complete other set of challenges that we're going to have to face, which I'll come back to very shortly. But essentially, with this role as a freelance chef, the chefs were expected to come in and put things on plates and the plates were re regent. The job itself was not stressful. The job itself was not overly uh, laborious. It was not very physical. It was literally going in, putting things on plate and then serving it. And that was it. They didn't even have to clean the kitchen. The kitchen was cleaned by porters. So where in that would anybody logically say that is worth £18 an hour? Because ultimately, the stress levels were almost non-existent. They had tea and coffee pretty much on tap. They went for about 10 cigarette breaks per day. It was, it was a very luxurious environment. But these chefs were grumbling that they weren't being paid £18 an hour. And when I spoke to them, uh, gotten in, getting into some sort of more heavy debates, they were sort of saying, well, this is worth, uh, should be worth £18 an hour. And my argument was, well, you can go and work for £18 an hour, but there'll be more stress involved. You'll be working tickets in a restaurant. And the likely chance is you'll be working in a restaurant that's already understaffed. So the likely chance is your prep levels when you go in are going to be very minimal. So you're going to have to work your arse off to be able to prep up to an acceptable level. But sadly, most of them didn't see it like that. They just saw that that's how much they are worth. So therefore, that's how much they should get, which you could say is all very well and good, but it all depends on, uh, again, where you're working. If you if you want to earn the 18, 19, 20 pounds per hour, then make sure that you get the jobs that pay that. But don't expect every single industry, every single sector to pay you that wage. That's not how the world's going to work. I can guarantee you now, you will very rarely get a position in a pub that's only can only seat 30 covers that are going to pay you 18 pounds an hour on a long-term basis. They cannot afford it. I can absolutely tell you categorically that they cannot afford it, which is where we are right now. We are in a cost of living crisis, which the general public is not footing the mass majority of the bill. It is the businesses that are footing the mass majority of the bill. And we are all in this mentality that we have to earn 18, 19, 20 pounds per hour as freelance staff. This will not be a sustainable level, and it's essentially something that I've been thinking about for a prolonged period of time. If you are a business and the only way you can get stuff is by paying this amount of money, you are going to be left with a choice of, well, I can carry on paying this and not earn any money, or I can shut down and go and get a job stacking shelves myself for less money. There's going to be a lot of businesses that are going to take that route. And there are a lot of businesses that have already taken that route with the increase of prices of uh, suppliers, costs, ingredients and utilities, etc. Not thinking about business rates, um, uh, for instance. A lot of businesses have already closing up because they see that it's not a viable business anymore. So chefs asking for an extortionate amount of wages is not going to help this situation. Um, and a lot of businesses, they're going to find different ways around it. They're not going to look at employing chefs. So they're going to actually look at simplifying menus, shortening menus, making menus that are purely just ping and ding foods. So literally foods that are just reheated or foods that you just add water to. So therefore, you don't need a qualified chef. And the industry is going to get more and more like this, as whether, whether you like it or not, because essentially if we continue to ask for these really high extortionate wages. Businesses are going to take this route because it's going to be the more simple and the more cheap route out there. And with the bought-in foods and the bought-in produce, even the things like the patisseries and the breads, etc., a lot of them are getting very, very good in quality. A lot of them are becoming as good as some of the finer dining establishments. Some of these dishes and some of these sauces and meats, they are being prepared that well that it is becoming harder and harder to tell that they are frozen or they are bought in or pre-prepared in a large manufacturer. So therefore, businesses, it's an easy solution for them. They can have a chef come in, charging them 
let's say best case scenario, £14 an hour. And that chef will charge them £40 an hour and it will take them six hours to make 100 portions of something from start to finish. That's the whole concept of the dish. So we're talking the potato or carbohydrates, the meat, the vegetables, the sauce, and so on. Or they can just order this dish and it actually works out that they end up saving a pound, two pounds, even as low as 50p per portion. For the business, that's a no-brainer. Then all they have to do is hiring somebody to reheat it. And the person reheating doesn't need a high level of skill. They just need to know how to follow the instruction on the back of the packet. So then all they're doing is just ping and dinging. The customer's happy. The business is making money. And the only people losing out are the chefs that have decided to essentially sell themselves at high extortionate ranges. So in my personal opinion, what will happen with essentially the agency and the freelance market um, over the coming years is it will dwindle and it won't be as prosperous as what it's been in 2019. 2020 was a blank year because of the pandemic. 21 bounced back, but then we had the potential of the lockdown at Christmas, which scared and upset a lot of businesses and it ruined a lot of businesses. A lot of businesses thought, oh God, we've not got the Christmas trade. How are we going to sustain ourselves? Because so many businesses rely on that Christmas trade to sustain themselves for a quiet January and February period. So then what happened? January, February came round. We came to, what was it? January, January, February, when the um, Ukraine war started. I'm pretty sure, well, I'm pretty sure it was January, maybe. Um, I'm trying to try to remember now. Um, but then that war started and then we had high energy prices. And because we then come out of Brexit, then suddenly costs of numerous produce were skyrocketing. Uh, for all the clients that had me on email, um, I immediately said to them, think about what it is you're importing. Um, even simple things like oranges, lemons and limes, we can't grow in this country. They're only grown in the Mediterranean countries. Uh, sorry, the, the hotter countries, etc. And the same for a lot of ingredients. A lot of ingredients we import um, because we're becoming a country where we just want every, everything on hand from all over the world, whether it be avocados, cost lettuce, or etc. So suddenly we had an, a very, very high inflated cost of living crisis, both for businesses and for homes. So suddenly businesses have had three consecutive years of essentially being completely abused from every single angle. And last year in 2022, when we're having these highly inflated cost of living, we're then also having chefs that are demanding extortionate wages. Yes, they are also going for their own cost of living, etc. And they are going for their own problems. But they're also not taking into account of what they actually really need. Like I say, if everybody does that exercise where they actually sit down and work out how, how much they, they need to earn per year or how much they can comfortably earn per year, I can almost guarantee you that it will not be as high as what it is that you are currently advertising out. For instance, if I did if I did my calculation, £15 per hour is exactly what I need to earn to be comfortable if I work 48 hours a week. I can guarantee you, if you do your own calculation, it will be a lot lower than what you actually need to live and sustain and enjoy life. Um, most of the time, people are just being tend to be a bit more greedy. But anyway, going back to what's going to happen in the future, um, there's going to be a bit of a nasty surprise. Like I said, a lot of businesses, they're going to struggle this year. They're going to struggle immensely this year, um, especially because consumer confidence is so low. Consumer confidence is the vital pinnacle point of restaurants and hospitality. You need people willing to spend money. But if people are struggling with their bills at home, they are not going out to eat. So therefore, the business's ability to afford to have agency chefs, freelance chefs or higher chef wages is only going to go down. So that's one major thing to really think about when you're advertising yourself out. Do you want to essentially compete yourself out the market so you're so extortionate and so high that you cannot, the business cannot afford to have you in? Or do you go a little bit lower and keep the business interested? It might also be worth to offer some sort of discount because I've heard so many chefs um, essentially get screwed over through their invoices of not being paid on time or just not being paid altogether. And then suddenly they're screaming onto the world of social media that this place hasn't paid or this place hasn't paid. One of the things that I've always done, which has worked about 90% of the time, is I've offered a 5 and 10% discount. If they pay the invoice within 24 hours, they get a 10% discount 
if they pay within seven days, they get a 5% discount. Some people have sort of argued with me and debated with me and said, well, if you just have an invoice policy where they have to pay you by 28 days, then they'll automatically have to pay you. Otherwise, you put a charge on top of it. And yeah, that's all well and good, but it doesn't guarantee you that you're going to have that money. If a business doesn't want to pay you, they won't pay you. And by the time you've gone through the collection agencies and figured out how to sort of like get insurance on it, et cetera, I can almost guarantee you that you'll be waiting potentially six, 12, 18 months before you'll actually see that money. If you see that money, if that company suddenly liquidates and dissolves, then there's a good chance that you won't ever see that money. Whereas the 5%, 10%, I put that into my equation on the yearly calendar and it works. Essentially, I know for how much money I need. So for instance, how much money I need per year is a certain amount. So then I add 12% on top of it. So then if everybody pays 10% discount, well, everyone pays with the 10% discount, I still end up with the exact amount of money that I need to sustain myself on. And businesses think they're getting a good deal. And businesses have me back time and time again because of that. And obviously, they also have me back because I'm um, well informed in various different areas, whether it be food safety or costings or just general sort of understanding and respectability, which is my final area I want to go on to. One of the things um, which has been very frustrating for businesses is the lack of professionalism with essentially the freelance chefs. Um, I don't know what it is, whether it's just the general understanding that you know you can walk out a job and then walk in another one quite easily or whether you just know that there's that much work about um that you're always going to find a job to walk into um not so much this january february this january february seems for most people seems to have struggled a lot of chefs seems to have not necessarily been able to find the work as quite comfortably as what they normally would so I'd be very, very cautious for a lot of chefs. I'd remember that your professional image is as important as the wage that you advertise and the work that you can complete. You should you should remember that you yourself, you're a business, you're, a, you're an image that people remember. So any chefs that are thinking, well, I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to putter about and not really care about the job. Um, just remember that that, is affecting your image. And if you're working for an agent, it's also affecting the agency's image as well. So it's there's a lot to take in, a lot to consider. I think I've answered the original question. I hope I've answered the original question of what's the, what's the appropriate wage for a chef. Yeah, there's plenty of, plenty of things to consider on that one. Where you're working, work involved, stresses, etc. I'm sure I rattle a few feathers. I'm always rattling feathers. Um, it doesn't really upset me that I rattle feathers or upset people. Sometimes people need a good talking to. People need a bit of perspective. But anyway, if you agree with me, please comment of why you agree with me. If you don't agree with me, also comment. Put your own perspective and put a reasonable perspective. I don't just want the comments of, oh, this person's an idiot, or this person doesn't understand what they're talking about. Tell me. For instance, if you want £40,000 per year, explain why you are worth £40,000 per year or £50,000 per year. Or explain why you're worth £18,000, £19,000, £20 per hour. There's got to be a fundamental reason why you are worth that. And as, I, as I've said plenty of times before, if you're walking in a business and you're saying, I'm worth £50,000 per year, you've got to prove to the business that they're going to earn that £50,000 plus extra to be able to pay you. If a business only turns over £100,000 per year, or £200,000 per year, you cannot expect them to pay you £50,000 per year. It doesn't work like that. No no sustainable business can afford to pay you £50,000 if they are only turning over 200000 I mean, for a start, with VAT at 20%, if they are earning uh, £200,000 per year, they've already got a VAT bill of 40000 So that's one thing to also think about and consider. But I'm sure if you are a qualified chef and you want £50,000 per year, You'd already understand things like that. But again, prove to me. Tell me why you are worth that amount of money. But that's it from me. I look forward to everyone's comments. I look forward to everyone's feedback. But until next time, take care, keep working hard, and remember to look after each other.